Hello, my name's Hemingway Jones, and I make videos about fountain pens for curious people. Today, let's look into this new fountain pen from Visconti, the Visconti Mythos in the Apollo color. This is a very interesting pen. It has all the over-the-top wackiness that you would expect from Visconti, and it's somewhat tamed down with this Schmidt nib. So is it the perfect combination of a German nib with a slightly crazy Italian pen body or something else entirely? Let's take a look. So I am a new convert to Visconti. I received my first Visconti pen at Christmas, the Homo Sapiens Bronze Age with that basaltic lava based resin. It's just an incredible pen, very much over the top and just hits everything you would expect from a slightly outrageous brand like Visconti. So when I heard that they were putting out what really amounts to an entry level pen and that it had all these interesting features and that it married a German nib with an Italian pen body, I just had to know what it was like. And this channel is in pursuit of just about everything and anything that you can experience in the fountain pen world. So I had to know what this pen is like. So let's go through it together step by step and let's start with its design. So the overall design of this pen is very interesting. It looks like a luxury pen that is far exceeding the $160 price tag of this pen. The general body shape has the soft facets. I would call it fluted. It has these really gentle indentations that run along the length that really help it to rest securely against your hand, but frankly cause some issues with the cap that we'll talk about later. The clip is very familiar. It has all those design elements, that soft arch of the Sconti that you would expect. It hinges over the top of the cap and works very effectively and is finished perfectly. It's very well done. One of my favorite design cues on here is the center ring that says Mythos in very large letters. And it also has the V for Visconti that seems to be forming Mount Olympus, which is a very nice touch. Similarly on the grip, which is bronze, it has a nice satiny finish feels very good in your hand. It also has a very similar repetitive V pattern that is raised and has a really nice feel to it so you know exactly where to put your fingers so you don't overreach the grip and end up on that beautiful nib. The nib, which we'll get into in more detail later, is a number six Schmidt nib of gold vermeil. Vermeil meaning that it's silver based. Very pretty, has a very prominent V on it for Visconti. So the cap is really interesting of this pen. It's magnetic and it does secure very well to the pen body. Little twist gets it there, it lines up the magnets and it feels rather tight even tighter than you would expect for a magnetic seal. So I really do enjoy that bit of the cap. Where there is an issue we'll talk about in the pros and cons is that the cap and posting it with the facets and with the magnets, it's not a pleasant experience. At the base of the pen appears to be a bronze medallion with the Visconti V. So each piece of this really harmonizes into a very luxurious looking pen that's slightly Baroque and is definitely imbued with that particular Italian sprezzatura, which is that stylistic sense that things just sort of come together but look rather relaxed in doing so. So it's just a really nice, impressive pen that I think would be brilliant for journaling and for showing up at any occasion. So let's talk about this Schmidt number six nib. It's very beautiful. It says Visconti right at the base of it and it does tell you which size it is. This particular iteration is a fine, a rare fine for me. I don't often buy fine fountain pens, but I will say I'm rather glad I did 
because this Schmidt Fine actually writes rather wide. Maybe I've been spending too much time with my Japanese pens lately, but this is a very wide, very wet and expressive fine. So I am very happy with it. The rest of the nib is just beautifully embellished. It's decorated in a style that you would expect from a pen that's much more expensive. And it sort of fits all the different styling cues that you would expect from Visconti. But now that Schmidt nib is very reliable, probably takes out some of the major criticism that you hear about Visconti in general. And that's that their QC has not historically always been on point. So some pen iterations are better than others. I think you're getting a much more uniform product here. It's also something that you expect, that you've seen in other pens, although it is customized to Visconti in its decoration and everything else. So it is a very effective nib. It writes wonderfully and it's a complete joy. I haven't had any issues with false starts or skipping or anything else. It feels very smooth. There's not a whole lot of feedback, but there is a little. It also makes a bit of that beautiful scribing noise that I love so much. Now this pen is a cartridge converter pen, which for many will be very convenient. The one downside, and I have to say this, is that this converter is just absolute rubbish. It's one of the cheapest converters I've seen come with a pen in a long time. The body of it just feels so flimsy. I feel like I could pinch it and just turn it into dust. You might want to consider upgrading it. That's certainly easy enough to do. I mean, converters are very cheap, so I'm not super happy about that. But nevertheless, it works. It works well. It's a very wet writing pen, and I'm still using the original converter right now, and I've had no issues. So let's talk about the most important thing of any fountain pen, and that is the writing experience. So I would call the writing experience with this pen mixed, but only for one reason. You feel like it should be really easy to post, and I just find that it's not. It's a very strange posting pen. So the magnets hold the cap onto the back of the pen, but it doesn't do it very well, so it seems to be pretty easy to shake it off. So you find yourself sort of twisting it to get it to stay a little better, and it's just a bit frustrating, and it just feels awkward without it being tight onto the back of the pen because that bit of flesh between your thumb and your first finger just wants to push it off. So I find myself not posting this pen, which really isn't a problem for me because I'm trying not to post pens in general, unless it's like a Pilot E95S. So that is something to consider. So it is a fun pen to use. I've been journaling extensively with it. I've been taking it to the office quite a bit. And I do love using this pen, but there are some problems. So let's talk about the pros and the cons. So one of the major pros of this pen is getting a Visconti pen for under $200. This pen goes for about 160. That's a great price for a Visconti. And does it feel like an actual Visconti? It does. So you don't feel shortchanged in any way. In fact, you start to believe that the nib is actual real gold and not a steel nib as it obviously is. It just, writes very well and it performs in every way as you would expect from a Visconti. Another pro is the fit and finish. Even under a loop where the clip affixes to the body is perfectly done, perfectly level at the top of the pen, the center band perfectly executed, very lovely. Everything is exquisitely finished. 
The pen itself, the resin is really beautiful. It has some sort of specks of gold in it, but they're so fine you almost can't see them unless you put it under a loop. But it's a very lovely brown pen. Of course, it also comes in pink and blue, so you have some color options there, but I really like brown pens, so this was the one for me. So the materials, the fit, and the finish are all very nice. Another pro is the gorgeous satin finish brass grip section with that ring of raised V's at the end to arrest your finger before it slides onto your nib. That is beautifully rendered, absolutely gorgeous, and does give a luxury feel, which is rather unexpected at a pen at this price point. Another pro for this pen is its design. It is absolutely beautiful. It's a gorgeous, luxurious looking pen that's rather surprising that it's only $160. Now let's go through some of the cons. First, I would have to say posting to me is a disaster. I just don't enjoy posting this pen. You might want to try it out for yourself before you buy it. Maybe you won't have a problem. But for me, I find it very awkward. I sort of want to jam it on there to make it work and it just doesn't seem to work for me. Another one is the converter. It's really kind of rubbish. Now I get why they used it. They had to cut some corners somewhere. I'm sure sourcing a Schmidt nib was a cost savings, but it's probably a beneficial one to us. But the converter one, it could have been a little nicer for a pen of this price. Nevertheless, it's easy enough. I think we all have a lot of extra converters kicking around so we can make something work. So let's touch on value. Are you getting a value with this pen? I think you are. I mean, it's obvious where the cost cutting is, but $160 for a beautiful Visconti pen, it seems like they really put a lot of thought and design in this. It's slightly wacky. It's as crazy as you would expect from Visconti, which I actually like. It has a lot of personality. It's very beautiful and fun to write with. The $160 price point for a steel nib with the brass and the different materials and coming from Visconti, I think is very fair. I think it's a fantastic pen in that regard. So, what do you think of the Visconti Mythos? Is it a pen you'd like to add to your collection? If so, you better act fast because I'm noticing that it's selling out everywhere. It seems to be very popular. But I actually enjoy it. It is a little over the top. It is a little crazy, but I'm glad I own it. So if you've been watching this video and you reach this point, please consider subscribing. We take a journey where we're trying to experience everything we can about fountain pens, inks, and journaling. Won't you come along with us? We go to a lot of interesting places. Also, if you'd like to become a member of this channel, please do. It's right by that subscribe button. If you do right now and you become a Cognoscenti or Illuminati member, we are doing a letter exchange and it's super fun and you get to exchange a letter with me. So when was the last time you had a pen pal? So I release new videos each week, Friday at noon. So join me then or join me on the live show, Tuesdays at 8 p.m. Eastern Standard Time. So we will see each other again very soon, further up the road. So take care.